Good evening. And with the apologies for having uh, messed around with your time schedule, I had a quickly a little job to do with the election commission on the orders of the party, so I had to go there and from there come here. So I'm sorry about uh, having to request for a change of my timing here. It's not very frequently that you have a situation where a body which represents industry, commerce and trade completes 90 years, has its annual general body meeting, we get a chance to interact, particularly at a time when India is going through transformational changes. The strength of an old institution, strength of a all India institution, strength of an institution which has the support of those who actually steer the economy, each from its, uh, from his or her own end, and also conducting themselves like a weathercock in a way if the governments will have to test the ground see what is happening in the ground and get a feedback it is you the chambers of commerce with all your members who give an indication of what actually happens in the ground where the pain points are and where actually you look for look up to the government to say would you stay away would you stay far from us or would you do something for us so i would think it's not very often that people in the government, and I was happy to know that the Prime Minister himself has been with you all yesterday, Finance Minister and uh, myself. So it's, it's, it's not very often that a 90-year-old body with pan-India presence actually uh, being the uh, indicator of what is happening in the economy, which engages with the government and where this government being what it is, under the leadership of the Prime Minister, wants to engage, wants to be responsive, and wants to hear. So as a part of that process, I'm here with you. I'm glad to be here. And uh, we've always, at least as long as I've been in the government, I've had uh, great uh, inputs, good uh, benefits by engaging with Fiki. And I do appreciate the role that Fiki is playing in being the bridge between the industry and the government. Many of the studies, many of the papers, many of your inputs which come to us actually tell us where action has to be done and done quickly. So um, even as we are engaging, I put on record your 90 years experience in the ground is very vital for the government, for the decision makers, for the policy makers. So first of all, let me uh, commensurate you, uh, put on record government's appreciation for the role that FIKI plays. And you've had very dynamic leaders, uh, the president-elect and the one uh, who's just now completing his term, Mr. Patel and Rashid Shah. Both of them, are, I'm sure, are going to steer you towards a successful 100 years. And I wish you very well, and I'm sure the government will benefit even more from your experiences. Even as I stand before you, I think I was uh, directed by Sanjay, talk about defense, talk about defense production, talk about what is happening in defense industry now that it's getting opened. There's a whole lot of things which, as usual, the ministries produce as talking points for you to sell the government. I'm not doing that. I'm sure all of you all are completely clear on where we are, what the kind of things we've done, what we could do even better. But I would definitely highlight a few things which both my predecessors, uh, Manohar Parikar and also Arun Jaitley have done, where uh, given the uh, time that I have in my hand, I'm making sure that I execute all of them, the calls that they have taken, the decisions that have been put in place, and if anything, try also to speed up many of the decisions which are still to be taken. 
So from my end, I'm looking at hearing from all of you all post this conference, I suppose, uh, as to what you have to suggest to the government, what you have to suggest to us in particular on defense. There's a lot of activity on defense, not just that it has been, economy has been opened up. We are very clear that the benefits will have to reach the medium and small scale uh, units. Indian investors who have already in anticipation of opening of the economy, who have invested, created capacities, will have to be supported. So you make in India and buy all the India designed, developed uh, and manufactured in India, the buy India, will all have to have quick and speedy traction. So the efforts that we are doing are to ensure that those which have to be encouraged for the investments which have already been made in this country, we'll have to take a call speedily. Of course, in all this, the biggest uh, compliance issue, which we are definitely 100% following, is to have greater transparency, and put everything in the public domain, receive inputs, and make sure that every such decision stands up to this accountability principle. So um, with all that in mind, I have made sure, and many of you all would have noticed, that the procurement meetings, the Acquisition Council meetings, are not held once in a quarter, but twice in a month. In fact, it has been a hectic time for the ministry's officials. And without complaining, I must say to their credit, without complaining, They've been rapidly looking at everything which has been waiting for months to get it all done. And I may be uh, confident enough to say that by December 31st, at least the Defence Acquisition Council would be on the top of it, in the sense no more waiting list will be with me. Thereafter, does it mean that we are going to procure tomorrow for all those decisions taken by the DAC? Maybe not, because after that, the cost negotiation uh, committees sit, the CNCs will have to go on. I'm also having a very quick appraisal of where the CNCs are. Are they moving adequately as fast as the uh, Defense Acquisition Council itself is moving, and so on. So uh, the attempt is, first of all, to clear the backlog, take clear, transparent, but take decisions the emphasis is on that. Third, where it is beneficial and makes sense to devolve power, both financial and deci otherwise decision-making power, to the respective force, the powers are being devolved to the uh, vice chiefs so that they can take call on that which is required urgently, quickly, speedily. So there is a lot of simplification of the process. I'm also making sure that in fact it was with Fiki that uh, I had made all arrangements uh, that we engage with the startups, startups who can contribute for defense, startups with whom we can have some meaningful engagement, startups to whom we probably can highlight issues which will be of interest for the ministry and therefore gain some traction on engagement with tra um, startups so that that sector also gets activated. Uh, I had scheduled a meeting for the 4th. I know my team was engaging with them, but on the 4th I had to rush off to the south because of the cyclone, okay? And uh, I couldn't sit in the meeting, but I've got a input from my team. I will sooner sit with them to make sure that interaction also gets going, not just as a discussion or meeting, but also as something with which we have to do a lot more decision-making. Uh, in that, I would just very quickly call uh, recall the technology uh, acquisition fund, I think, that we've created, in which everything is put in the public domain. It's all in the website. More than uh, two plus six, eight projects have been almost coming to a conclusion. They are all going to be um, sanctioned through the fund, and they will start working on the projects. There are, I am told, another 24 projects also, which is coming through through the technological uh, technology Acquisition Fund. So we are moving on different uh, uh, levels, diff at, uh, in varying uh, levels, and also at different points, 
so that not just acquisition production also i'm um, i may uh, this may be a proper and uh, suitable equation to say that i'm doing a major review of the ordnance factories to make sure we understand where they are what is it that they have to be given are they going to be um, in a position to be joint venture partners with people can they benefit from transfer of technology if anything how is it that we are going to integrate them so ofbs are also being looked into with the drdo i have had quite a few engagements to say that they should now identify those um patentable products that they have which can be commercially utilized for which again i am going to have an engagement with the drdo with the industry so that they can be hands on discussion and move towards decision making rather than say all right we'll take a list of the inventories on those uh, patentable things that we've done and we'll come back to you so there is a sense of making sure that every aspect of this large ministry is given a shake up and made to say what is it that you could do to speed up what is it that you can do to remove the flab and how fast can you move so for a ministry which is fairly been uh, i'm searching for a word uh, a ministry which has been fairly sort of uh, cocooned we are trying to come out and say we can do things uh, which will make a difference to india being a largest i am told varying statistics but second or the third world largest procurer of arms and if indeed we are that big a procurer of arms second or third it doesn't matter but how much of it can be produced in india bought in india and over and above that sold to other countries from here so i would not be saying something new this is uh, something which the prime minister does with every ministry progress issues where he would have to come in to help us get things sorted out or if necessary remind us there's more to do so with that kind of a hands on approach from the pmo it's only been easier to that extent for me to move forward in this ministry underlying the importance of indian private sector and also the public sector in defense we are making sure that every investment small medium big which has been made by the private sector is on our data pool and we will be able to benefit from it in fact one of the things which uh, i can say uh, it's not because i have also come from the south but the thought came to me in the south and i asked for people to work on it i have been looking at uh, organically grown industry hubs for instance and this is not to talk of only one region i am replicating this everywhere else where that organic um, indigenous growth has happened so i am taking the example not to limit it to that if you were to look at the map of india if there is one region where of course because i was in industry earlier i can talk about the corridor chennai to bangalore corridor uh, visakhapatnam to chennai corridor chennai corridor going down further till tutukudi and so on but if you were to look at the map because i'm um, i've been uh, very uh, intensively engaged with this uh, uh, industrial corridor i'm taking this example again to say if you were to look at one region where you have the benefit of organically grown industry which has got an inclination towards different sector you start from avadi the heavy vehicle factory which is known as the tank factory in close to chennai you have the port one city which has three ports if i can use that to say uh, how investments public investments have gone to develop the port in chennai enur you have the you know three ports which have come up there then you also have a private sector which is tier 1 investment in building a port 
which is capable of producing ships, the Kartopalli. Then you move west westwards. You have, of course, I did say about the heavy vehicle factory. Then you move a bit further. The state government is looking at setting up uh, aerospace, uh, aerospace hub somewhere near Salem. Then you move a bit further, you have Hosur, Hosur Industrial Belt, where a lot of small and medium industries have invested, helping the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, which is actually in Bangalore. So if you look at it, for all the three forces of the Indian Army, AV, and also Air Force, beginning from Ennoor, passing through the heavy vehicles factory, talking about the aerospace industry, and moving over to HAL in Bangalore, you have a neat belt. Coincidentally, the industrial corridor passes through that belt. 50 kilometers up and down, you may add up. But industrial corridor passing through that belt with a concentration of small and medium industries, all of whom have some or the other contribution having been made to the defense industry. Now, I don't want any one particular government or any state government alone to be credited with this, but the credit largely goes to the private sector, which gradually started in filling in the gaps and bringing in units which are invested, which probably today, each one of them can probably today, I won't be exaggerating when I say this, each one of them today can tell us that they are providing a component, at least a component, for a defense aircraft being manufactured in some part of the world, or an armored vehicle being manufactured in some part of the world, or for a you know electronic uh, chip that is required by some kind of a uh, telecommunication unit from whichever part of the world. So if you look at it, whether it's for the Tejas, whether it's for anything else, I'm just taking this example. That one belt gives me so many units, small, medium, large, all of them who have some contribution to make to the different sector. And so would I if I look at Mumbai, Pune, Aurangabad. A corridor which I can draw from Mumbai down south southeastwards, coming down to Aurangabad. Fantastic clusters of units which are contributing to many industrial sectors, particularly in defense. I, I probably will get a few more like that if I search Kanpur or even towards Orissa, Bengal. So I have tasked the ministry to identify such naturally grown, organically grown, indigenous, small and medium, who probably have even borrowed or taken technology from elsewhere, but today are in a position to tell us, here we go, we are here, we can contribute to the defense sector, what are you going to be doing to us? I have therefore promised, for instance, when I was in Chennai uh, recently, that I will have officials from the production and also from acquisitions from the ministry go there, sit with these people, and talk about not what they're producing today, but what in the next 50 years would the defense ministry want from industry, whether they are capable of giving it or not, at least point a direction towards that area or those areas in which if investment were to be made, there will be a market, market from government of India. I'm not giving any assurance to any one particular industry or any particular unit, but where are our priorities? What are the sectors in which we want to have investment for the next 50 years? So I do not want a situation which had happened till now, that we've invested, we've produced, we've got the prototypes, but you're not even testing whether you want them which is a waste because if you've invested, done the research, produced something, nobody's bothered to take it from you. Obviously, it's a waste of your resources, waste of the country's resources. So I'm trying to break that mold by saying, we'll have direct engagement, we'll come and sit with you, tell you what in the next 50 years would interest us, go ahead. Of course, I'm not giving any commitment, but if I'm able to give you a broad direction, there's some sense of confidence with which industry can move forward. So that's the kind of engagement I'm going to have to start with, with the South, I will do it with Maharashtra, Aurangabad, uh, Pune, that belt, and look also for further areas. Or if you were to suggest some more areas, I'll be glad to have ministries officials with people in the three forces joining to tell them where are those which 
in which we want your you know support your investments your you know the the skilled technical people from the forces can also be partly sent for a year or two to help you all to see what is the kind of calibration you want in the technological specs that you with which you start your production or carry forward so we are trying to be slightly more proactive out of the box go and meet up with everybody um, and take it forward from there but i know these are only broad pictures that i'm giving you they i'm sure are areas in which you already have questions to ask of us in one such an association meeting i was referring to that when i met uh, sanjay baru the last time one of the associations which came and told me about it i immediately called all the members of the association on the one side and had all the officials sit on the other and tell each other as to where they are and why some of the promises given or why some of the timelines given earlier under make in india are getting staggered and many of such um complaints which were put forth to me were beyond the time we are still waiting we are not getting the licenses or the permissions i have engaged with the home minister where issues of security related matters are holding up some of these clearances i have said if we can give ourselves a time if after 2 months of waiting if the home ministry un unfortunately is not able to clear could we please consider that those applications are deemed as having obtained the permission give the deemed status if you are not able to clear it within 2 months because of some reason can it be assumed that they can go ahead saying i have got the permission i have not heard anything adverse so it means that i have got the permission so i have had a discussion with the the home minister on it he will certainly take a quick call and come back just to reassure that we are not going to spend too much time i am sure there are many more such things which uh, we can address for a uh, immediate redressal of uh, delays or problems but for a long term we i'll certainly benefit from hearing from all of you all at this stage without having to go through all that we've done all that is already on the policy all that which is already declared and for you all to know i'll uh, finish my uh, address to you with uh, a lot of good luck to you wishes to you for a successful another 90 years uh, and uh, again i would appreciate all the inputs that you would give us of great value so thank you for giving me this opportunity i look forward to having greater engagement with all thank you very much